So, welcome back. Uh, we have just looked at RDF, which is a way of representing data on the web and its extension RDFS and we spoke briefly about something called OWL, the web ontology language, which is an extension of RDFS. So, we are talking about ontologies and uh, ontologies are basically representations which relate different kinds of classes together and talk about which elements belong to which, which class and things like that. Now, RDF documents were triples subject, predicate, object and each of them was stored as resources and RDF and RDFS gave us some metadata about what each thing was essentially whether you know which class it came from and things like that. Before we talk about reasoning in for ontologies, let us discuss a subset of first order logic which is useful for talking about ontologies and that is description logics. So, description logics are also called as logics of noun phrases. So, noun phrases are basically categories you know things like goat, lion and whatever and uh, description logics allows us to define such categories and define relations between such categories and relations between individuals which belong to certain categories. So, let us look at description logics as I did for RDF. Uh, uh, we have taken this slides from S. Baskaran who is an expert programmer working in ontologies. So, we had said earlier that first order logic is semi decidable that if there exists a proof for a theorem, then we can devise strategies to find that proof. But if there does not exist a proof, then the program can go into an infinite loop essentially. So, here in this diagram we see this that uh, for theorems we will find be able to find proofs. Unsatisfiable formulas are basically negations of theorems. So, if a formula is unsatisfiable then its negation would be uh, a valid formula. But there are formulas which are neither unsatisfiable nor theorems and they are these are called contingent formulas whose truth value depends upon the interpretation that you are looking at essentially. And it turns out that in that there is a small subset which will not terminate uh, if you want to prove those statements. So, what we are looking at now is a subset called description logic formulas here which is going to be decidable which basically means that you can query for those formulas and you will get a yes no answer within a finite amount of time. The kind of things that we can reason about as we will see is consistency, membership testing, subsumption testing, classification and so on. We will see that description logics are a family of logics and there is a trade offs of expressivity versus computational complexity. Here are some web resources for talking about description logics. Uh, uh, you can see that the word ontology comes in frequently. So, there are all implementations, all remember is web ontology language. Uh, then there are automatic reasoners which are available which you can use directly for doing, a doing the kind of reasoning that we are going to talk about. And there are repositories of ontologies. So, the, so there are many specialized ontologies that people have developed which can be used in those specific domains. For example, there is this PubMed system which stores uh, uh, publications from the medical domain and they have an associated ontology along with that. 
So, here is uh, what we are going to study in description logic. Uh, we will see that uh, uh, we will talk about sentences and there would be two kinds of sentences, one which will be kind of quantified formulas and the others would be about individuals which are called assertions. Then we will see how to construct new concepts and we will talk about names of concepts and rules and objects. Some of the symbols that will be used are given here below. Just like we defined a vocabulary for first order logic, uh, we have a vocabulary for description logics as well. We will see this as we go along. So, it is a family of languages, it is not just one language. Just like logic is a family of languages, description logics are also a family of languages. And uh, basically, there is as, as they become more expressive, then the comp computational complexity of these languages increases essentially. These logics are named by uh, are known by names like the ones given below AL, ALC, ALCN, Schoen, Sroik and so on. And let us see what these stand for. So, the most basic of languages is AL or attributive language in which you are talking about binary attributes. Essentially. Then we add this notion of concepts which uses the complement. So, remember that a concept is interpreted as a subset of the domain essentially. When you talk about doctors or surgeons or mothers or whatever it, or carnivores, herbivores, whatever. These are basically subsets of the universe of discourse or the subsets of the domain essentially. How do we describe these concepts is what we are going to be talking about now. And given a concept C, if you can talk about its complement, then such a language will have a C in it. So, for example, ALC, attributive language plus complement. If you can talk about things like role transitivity, we will add the letter S to that language. Uh, if we talk about complex role inclusion axioms, as you will see examples of this, then you have the letter R. If you talk about role hierarchies, then we can talk add H to that. So, for example, uh, role is a type of another. Uh, so, uh, father is a type of parent for example, if you talk about the role. Remember roles are binary uh, predicates. If you can in include names, then we will add the name O to the language. So, for example, the music group ABBA for example, there are four people there, you just list the four names, their names begin with A, B, B, A and that is a set, that is a group called ABBA. We will talk about inverse rules, then we add I to that. If we talk about number restrictions and we will see this, we add N to that. And if we add qualified number restrictions, then we add Q to that. So, the various languages that we mentioned in the last uh, slide, so Schoen for example, Sloic, you can now see what, what is the, what does each of this language allow you to say essentially. Let us look at uh, what these uh, represent essentially. So, as I said, uh, description logics uh, allow only unary and binary predicates to model a domain. Uh, unary predicates are shown as uh, rectangles here. So, for example, there is person, there is happy, happy, there is apple, there is teen and so on. Binary predicates are shown as arrows. So, there is owns and has brother. Both of them are what is called as rules. So, a role relates an individual to another resource which is a filler. Individuals are drawn as circles here essentially. So, as we said concepts can be teen, apple, happy, 
roles can be owns has brother has sibling individuals can be named individuals we already know about interpretations in when you talked about logic the same concept applies to description logics because description logics are after all subsets of first order logics so concepts uh, the interpretation of a concept denoted by concept superscript i where i is kind of overloaded a little bit here uh, is basically a set of objects which means it's a subset of the top concept which is denoted by this delta role is a subset of the domain cross the domain and we have seen that has brother owns and so on individuals are mapped onto that specific individuals who we will represent by saying that the name Lucy refers to this individual which we have said Lucy superscript i for that particular Lucy. Here are some sentences from description logics. Uh, the first one the sentences are written on the top here the description logic representations are given to the top left and their equivalent first order representations are given in the bottom essentially. So, you can always whatever you are saying in description logic you can always say in first order logic, but not everything you can say in first order logic can be said, said in, in description logics because the language is more restrictive essentially. So, we will see these uh, construct forming these concept forming operators soon, but this stands for intersection. So, if you take the category of teens and you take this category which stands for the fact that those things who have at least one Apple device and then you have a full category here and then we are saying that this category belongs is a subset of this category of happy people, happy whatever not necessarily people. So, you will notice that this symbol which stands for is subsumed by maps onto this symbol which stands for implication in logic. So, in logic you would say if x is a teen and there exists a y such that x owns y and y is of category apple then x is happy. So, that uh, is corresponds to this symbol here essentially and of course corresponds to, to and and so on. So, likewise you can you are saying that brothers are siblings. So, for all x y x is a brother of y then x is a sibling of y or x has a, a sibling. Then of course, individuals Lucy is happy Jack Lucy has brother Jack. So, let us now talk about the knowledge base uh, that here in this language. We will see that there are three kinds of three components to the knowledge base one is called the T box, one is called the R box and one is called the A box essentially. So, that is it here T box, R box and A box. T box is a set of concept as axioms, R box is a set of role axioms and a box are assertions which talk about individuals. So, the knowledge base is made up of these three things and the three sentences that we saw recently are part of three different components of the knowledge base. This R box because it is only talking about has brother is a role and you are saying that it is a sub role of has sibling. Concepts, assertions express class memberships, role assertions ex, ex, express object to object relationships, axioms express subclass equivalence and disjointness amongst concepts, role axioms express sub property equivalence and so on. They also express things like reflexivity, symmetry and so on. Remember that roles are binary relations. So, we have this 
three finite set of signature symbols N C, R C and N I set of concept names, set of role names, set of object names. We have seen examples already here. So, the statements in the knowledge base are written using these symbols. Let us talk about constructors now. So, since we want to look at quite a few of them, let us take a break and uh, we will come back and look at this. Okay.